Hello, and welcome to Serial Tech's Introduction to SAS SATA and the Serial Tech Bus Expert. My name is Matthew Hallberg. I'm the product manager at SerialTech.com, and uh, my contact information is listed here. So the objectives of this training set of videos is to gain a better understanding of the basic concepts for SAS and SATA. We'll be going over things such as primitives, handshakes, frames, etc. We're also going to demonstrate how using the bus expert will assist in viewing and understanding traffic. How each viewer within the bus expert software can show different layers of traffic. And for a suggested follow-up, please view Serial Tech's videos on operating the bus expert on YouTube listed at the URL below. Or if you just go to youtube.com and search for Serial Tech, you'll see our videos. So let's first start with Serial ATA. These are some introductory notes. A Serial ATA is, of course, a serialized version of Parallel ATA. Um, it's a parent-child relationship, and it includes support for a TAPI, which is generally a DVD or CD, CDRWs. Um, it is a replacement for IDE Parallel ATA, which um, if I'm not mistaken, has already taken place. Uh, most motherboards that you buy on the market today will not have a parallel ATA port, rather they'll have um, a different port for a floppy drive if the motherboard manufacturer chooses to do so. There are several kinds of different devices available in the market. You'll hear terms such as an HBA, that stands for host bus adapters. What it really is is just a host which is likely controlled by the CPU. There are port multipliers, uh, which can take a single SATA connection and fan it out up to nine devices. Where you see such a device would maybe be inside of a set-top box, uh, like let's say a TiVo box that has two or three SATA drives inside. Uh, there is a HDD, SSD. HDD stands for hard disk drives, and SSD stands for solid state drives. Hard disk drives, of course, have platters, and uh, they're typically what you'll find nowadays at your local fries or wherever your electric stores are. And solid state drives are the new kids on the block. They're essentially made out of flash memory, offer higher performance, but uh, at a greater cost. There's eSATA, which is external SATA. Many of you will have an eSATA port on your desktop or laptop. This is used for uh, an external SATA cable, so you can use to connect to maybe an external SATA drive, um, and also was put out there as a high-speed replacement for USB. Lastly, you'll see SATA bridges. Uh, the most popular variety you'll see is USB to SATA, which allows a, sy a system to see a drive over USB. Also, um, maybe not so present in the market, fiber channel to SATA. So the basics. The protocol is based on usage of the following items. Primitive slash out of band, which is a link layer. Frames, which is a packet layer. And commands, which is the application and transaction layer. The link layer is essentially sending of data patterns, four bytes, or what we'll call the D word, at a time. The data is 8B, 10B encoded, and uses K and D characters, and is scrambled to avoid EMI issues. K and D characters are used to specify the type of byte being used, data or control. So if there's a K character, it means it's control character specifying a non-data byte slash primitive. So for example, D23.1, D23.1, D21.5, and then a K28.3 is equal to SOF. Uh, and we'll learn later on that that means it's the start of frame primitive. D is for data character. So as you see below, there are four different Ds here, uh, which equals this value here. 8B and 10B encoding is a coding scheme used by Serial ATA to translate unencoded data and control bytes into characters. Um, if you actually Google 8B and 10B encoding, you'll, you'll find it pretty quickly. There's also another concept of running disparity, which is used in conjunction with 8B and 10B to limit the run length of ones and zeros on the line. Typically, you don't want to have more than six or seven ones or six or seven zeros at a time, simply because it makes the... Uh, lines stay high a little bit too long. Scrambling is also used to distribute the potential EMI transmissions over a broader range. And then 8B and 10B encoding errors, running disparity errors, are generally a good indicator that you have some physical layer issues. Meaning the connection between your host and your device. Uh, you might have some problems there. 
primitives, um, they're primarily used to start, stop, and request data, and maybe changes in uh, link state. So lines are going to be your most popular primitives uh, for both SAS and SATA. This is sent to align activities between host and device, essentially align the clocks. Um, they must be sent every 256 D words. So that can occur quite often, especially when you're higher up in the uh, speed rates. Sync is uh, for synchronizing. X ready, that means that the product is ready to start transmitting a frame. R ready means that the product is ready to start receiving a frame. R IP, that means receipt and pro or yeah, RX in process. So the product is receiving the frame. WTRM, waiting to terminate the connection. So we finished sending the frame and now we're waiting for the device to say, okay, I've received it all. ROK, product has received the frame and its CRC is good. R error, product has received the frame and its CRC is bad. SOF, start a frame. EOF, end of frame. And in a SATA frame, the D word that is previous to the EOF is a CRC value. Hold means the product is not ready to send receive additional data. Hold A is the product acknowledges that the other product needs time to catch up. Cont. Cont is essentially continues. Uh, it continues the previous primitive, the previous primitive until a different one is sent, which is also used to reduce EMI. And then for power management, we have PMREC-S, which is Interface Power Management Request for Slumber, PMREC-P for Partial, PMAC for Acknowledging the Power Management Request, and PMNAC, Denying the Power Management Request. Lastly, and not so popularly used, is DMAT, which is generally sent to terminate the DMA transition. Next, we're going to look at OOB slash speed negotiation. OOB, otherwise known as out of band, is a signaling pattern of either aligned primitives or D words consisting of D24.3 characters and idle times used to initialize the SATA interface. There are three kinds of OOB signals used in serial ATA. Common it, which is used by the device to request a communication initialization. Com reset, which is used by the host to force a hardware reset on the device. And com wake which is used by either the host or the device to signal the physical layer or the file layer to wake up. This is a quick diagram of what speed negotiation looks like. You'll see that the host sends out a COM reset, the device sees the COM reset and sends a COM in it, the host sees a COM in it and sends a COM wake to wake up the physical layer, the device sees a COM wake and sends its own COM wake, and then the host and device start sending different types of patterns. So the host will start sending D10.2 symbols at 1.5 gigabits per second and the device will start sending aligns at its most highest supported speed. Once the host sees the aligns at the most highest supported speed it will then send aligns itself and at the end of it they will send syncs to signify that their clocks are their clocks and data rates are in sync. So here's what a trace looks like in our protocol view of speed negotiation. So you'll see com reset, com init, com wake, com wake. Here's the speed negotiation, the first align that's sent at the highest speed from the device. Here's the host seeing the first align and sending at the highest speed for lock. And then eventually you'll get to an X ready, meaning that the device is ready to send a frame. Interface power management is probably the biggest marketed feature of serial ATA. It's used to efficiently handle an idle link, reducing power consumption by reducing power to the SATA physical interface, or PHY. There are two modes for IPM, partial and slumber, each with slight differences related to how much power is reduced and how long it will take for the device to get the PHY ready, otherwise known as PHY ready, after receiving a com wake to wake the interface up. Partial requires that the device achieves fire ready in 10 microseconds. And slumber requires the device to achieve fire ready in 10 milliseconds. A device or host can request a power.
power management state transition by sending a power management request for partial or S for slumber. The receiver of the request either sends a PMAC acknowledged and approved or a PMNAC depending on if it is ready to go into PM mode or if it even supports power management. Power management requests can be sent either by the host, otherwise known as HIPM, or the device, known as DIPM, depending on what the host and device support. So here it's very important to have a protocol analyzer that is able to lock into the data clock, uh, as this is critical during power management, as either the host and device will send data as soon as fire ready is, is reached and achieved. If the analyzer takes too long to lock into the data clock, it could miss important data like an SOF, which essentially would mean that the, the analyzer would miss the entire frame. Here's what a trace looks like with IPM. So you'll see a PM rec, a PM mac. The lines go idle. Uh, once, once the host is ready to send something to the device, it sends a calm wake to wake up the interface. The device responds with a calm wake. The host sends an X-Ready saying, okay, I'm ready to send you something, and then we'll have a frame transmission. So for frame transmission, it's a very simple process. Essentially, one side will send an X-Ready when it's ready to send something. The other side will send an R-Ready, meaning an RX is ready. And you'll see the use of cons here. X-Ready will send a cont after maybe a couple x readies just to say, you know, I I'm ready, I'm really ready to send something until I see that you're ready to receive it. Then the host sends the SOF and then a bunch of data followed by a CRC and an EOF. You'll see here that as soon as the device sees the SOF it starts sending RIPs. And essentially once the frame is sent the host is going to send WTRMs or it's waiting for termination until it sees an ROK which means the receive was OK and then they'll send syncs. There was this other concept of hold and hold A. So again, for a brief um, overview of what hold and hold A means, it means that one side needs some time. So either I'm sending you some data and I need some time to gather more data, or you're receiving time and you need more time to effectively store that data. So you'll see it's similar. X ready, R ready, SOF, data, 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 data. All of a sudden, the device says, well, I need some time to store that data. As soon as the host sees these holds, it must respond to the hold A's uh, pretty quickly. And then once the device is finished uh, doing its back one work to store the data, it'll start sending RIPs. And then the host, after seeing the RIPs, will send more data. So here's a trace with frame transmission. So you'll see x readies r readies more RREDIES, an SOF, a bunch of frame data, a CRC, and a, an EOF, some WTRMs, and a CONT. The device is sending RIPs here, and at the bottom, an ROK. That concludes this portion of training. Please uh, stay tuned for our next section, which is entitled SATA Frames. Thank you.